During this virtual macaque lesson, we are going to be creating this lovely, delicate looking dragonfly using just Crayola markers and a Bic Biro. Very, very basic. You do not need fancy, expensive materials to make beautiful artwork. I'm going to show you exactly how. Now, I am using a sheet of mixed media paper. You will need something a little bit thicker that can take the water that we're going to add. So a cardstock or a mixed media, even a watercolor paper would be perfect for this. Now, I also have a sketching pencil. I have an eraser. I have a pot of water, paper towel, and a medium size round headed paintbrush for activating my marker pens. Now, before we can start bringing these dragonflies to life with color, we have to sketch them first. So what we are going to do, clear some space here, I'm going to draw a diagonal line, a small line going across my page here to show that my dragonfly is flying at an angle. So very lightly, I'm going to press a little bit harder so you can see the lines, but you're going to press very lightly. So here is my diagonal line. There's my dragonfly flying across. Now I'm going to turn my page so my line is running vertical up and down from where I am. This is going to make it much easier to sketch those wings. Now, first of all, let's liven up this body a little bit. So I'm going to do a circle at the top for my dragonfly's head. A little bit of an oval shape here. Whatever I do, I'm keeping the same on either side of my line. It's like a mirror image line reflecting on either side. Another little chunky shape there. And then a skinny little body going all the way down to a pointy tail. There we are. Now, coming down to the second shape here, you might have something different on yours. This is a very rough guideline for you. I'm going to do a little visual marker on either side to show that that is where my wings are going to start from. Now, dragonfly wings are long and skinny. Not like a butterfly. A butterfly has large wings. We're doing long and skinny. So I'm going to do a little visual marker about here to show where my wing is going to reach out to. And I want roughly the same on the opposite side. If you are an absolute perfectionist, use your pencil. Lay it down so you're touching the dragonfly. Slide your finger to the marker. Then you know what your measurement is. You can hold it on the other side. Look at that. Got it pretty much perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to reach out from my body to my little visual marker on either side. Lovely. Now I want to do my best to get them the same. So I'm going to come down at a bit of an angle here on each side. Again, roughly coming out. I want the same distance on either side. Then I'm going to curve and reach out to that point curve and reach out to that point. Now here is a sneaky trick. We have positive space, which is our dragonfly, negative space, which is the outside. We have lots of Macart 101 videos on the basics of drawing that covers negative and positive space. If I slide my pencil up, so it's touching both wings, look at the two triangles that are formed in here. I can use these triangles, make sure they are the same to make sure that my wings are the same. Negative shapes are very, very useful. Now what I'm going to do is two more visual markers to show where my bottom wings are gonna come out to. So one is gonna come out to about here and roughly the same on the other side, about here, a little bit higher up. Using visual markers before I go for it and sketch in my, my large wing. So again, I'm gonna start close to the upper wing here and some visual markers again, that's where my wings are starting. And then I'm going to come out, so they're ever so slightly underneath my wings on top. They're coming out from under there. See, I've gone a little bit past this one, that's totally fine, it's a rough guideline. And then back down, like that. It's a funny shape, yours is going to be different to mine, doesn't matter. Do the best to get the same wing on the other side. Use your pencil and look at the negative shapes. So let's have a go at sketching in the other one. So mine goes past, if you see, my wing goes past ever so slightly. 
So I've got to make sure I've got the same on this one. Pencils are really fabulous measuring tools. Comes down, and then goes up. There we are, not perfect, but I am happy with that. Fabulous. I'm gonna use my eraser, take out the lines that I do not want going down through the center. I'm not erasing the body, just that guideline down through the center. Any extra little pieces on my wings. Let's jump straight into color. So this time I'm turning my dragonfly back on its side again. Just wanna make that wing a little bit darker. Don't make yours darker, leave yours nice and light. I'm making mine darker just so you can see him or her. There we are. Now I have pre-selected some colors for my dragonfly here. Now I've reserved these two, my pink and my blue, for my dragonfly wings and body. And these two for my background. So I'm gonna start in my background first. Now, using marker pens, these very, very basic markers make fantastic watercolors. You're gonna be very surprised at what you see now. Marker pen lid off and put it on the back so you don't lose it. Very important, we don't wanna lose the lids. Now, I'm laying my marker down using the flat, the long edge here, and I'm gonna be pretty scruffy. I don't wanna use the point, I want some larger shapes here. And in the background here, I'm just gonna scribble scrabble every now and then, come right up to your dragonfly. Do not be neat, we want a super rough, loose dragonfly background. It's gonna look very blurry. Here we go. Coming right up between the wings. Super fast, isn't it? Don't think about it too much, just a nice spread of color. I've got white gaps everywhere, doesn't matter. That's gonna blend out when I add my water. Wonderful, that's it. And I'm go, gonna go in with my green this time. So again, lid on the back. And I can go over the top of some of the yellow, again, using the flat, not the point. Just kind of scribble scrabbling around, leaving some super loose areas of green. Now, you can have fun with this. You can do lots of different colors in your background. But you have to understand that when we add water, it's gonna activate this marker and turn it into paint. So be aware, certain colors will come together and the color that they turn into might not be very nice. Remember, all primary colors together, the red, yellow, and blue, make brown. So be careful not to muddy your colors. Perhaps grab a scrap of paper and test. Lay some marker pens down, add some water, and see what colors they turn into first before you decide to commit to your work. There we are. Now what I'm going to do is put the lid back on, lay that one down, and in comes my water, my paper towel, and my brush. Now I'm going into my water with my brush. I only need a little bit of water, so I'm gently just dabbing on the paper towel, getting the excess off. I do not want to super soak my paper. So here we go. Gently over the top, tickling through, activating the marker here. You can see I've got some lovely textures left behind. That looks beautiful. So I'm gently just jiggling my paintbrush about on the surface just enough to kind of lift the marker up off the paper and move it around a little bit. Do you see how it blends it out? A little bit of water is all you need. So I'm getting a really lovely kind of greeny yellow blend of colors in my background. So I'm continuing all the way around, gently activating it. Now as you add your water, it is not done. Now once you've taken your water across, you'll see what's happening over here. The colors are bleeding out even more. So where you're seeing small lines and things over here, if you have that on yours, do not worry. They will continue to move along with the water. They will slowly creep out across your paper.
There we go. Now, as you give it a second to lift up from the paper, it's much easier to go over and just move out any lines that you're trying to just blur and hide. It's totally fine if you want to have some little areas of texture, little hints of details in the background. It's a blurry yellowy green, like our dragonflies floating over grass or some kind of a hedge or tree or something. So you can have a little bit of detail showing through. That's absolutely fine. There we are. That is my background dry. Now, whilst my background is drying, what I'm going to do, rather than just take a complete break and wait for it to dry, I'm going to move on to my dragonfly. Now, I know that with a wet background, if my marker pen here touches my wet background, the water will pick it up and it will start to bleed. So I've got to be very careful not to take my marker near the wet paper. Now what I'm going to do again is use the flat of my marker, not the point, the flat. And I'm going to start towards the center of my dragonfly and just gently whisk down, not all the way. I'm kind of lifting my marker as it goes down. If my eyes were closed right now, I wouldn't even know I was drawing. I cannot feel the surface of the paper. I am pressing so lightly. Tickle the paper as lightly as you can. Practice on a spare piece of paper if you need to. Same on this one. I'm following the direction of the wing. It's like a little arrow showing me what direction to push my marker pen in. There we go. And the same on these two. Gently wisping down. Lovely. And the last one. Now I'm going to do the body of my dragonfly the same. You can see where I've actually gone and touched the wet area a little bit and you can see it bleeding out a tiny bit. So be careful. I'm going to do a little bit going down the body again, just more on one side here. Just a little bit. I know it's wet down here, but I'm going to add it anyway. There we go. Now I'm not done yet. Starting to come to life. Did you see how much that blue has just lifted our dragonfly up? We're going to make our dragonflies look dazzling. I've decided to complement my blue with some pink. You can do whatever color you like for yours. So I'm putting the lid on. And starting down in the white area of each wing this time, I'm going to very gently, same technique, but moving back, just a little hint of pink. Once I've added the water, if I feel that I would like to heighten my colors and add some more, I absolutely can. And a tiny bit down the body as well. So now using my water, which has gone a little bit green from the background, doesn't matter at all. Dabbing on my paper towel again, just a little bit here. I'm starting on the blue and I'm gently wisping my brush up, activating that marker pen, gently pulling it up towards the pink. Beautiful. Then I'm going to do the same thing, working from the pink, pulling it down into the blue. So the two colors gently kind of meet in the middle. Now I'm going to let that dry, but it is not done. It will carry on moving around by itself, but it will stay within the area that I've added the water. It cannot go any further than the water I have added. So I'm going to go around and do each wing now. So very gently starting down close to the dragonfly's body, taking the brush away and then pulling the pink down into the blue. You can see how the pink is combining a little bit with the blue, giving me a lovely purple shade. I like that a lot. We're going to be adding some fabulous details over the top. So don't worry if it's a little scruffy on the edges. We're going to tidy that right up. I'm going to turn a little bit and come down through the body. This is a small area, so I'm really tickling the paper with the very tip of the paintbrush here. 
absolute control over where this color is going. It cannot go anywhere that I have not added water. So make sure your background is dry so the two don't combine. There we are, beautiful glassy looking dragonfly. And now I am going to wait. This is very, very important. Before you start adding any of your fine dark details over the top to lift your dragonfly up and really create a beautiful finish, you must let it dry. The pen that we're going to use is a wet ink. And if we add wet ink to a wet surface, the same thing will happen. It will bleed and we're going to use black. We do not want a blurry looking black dragonfly. So be patient, take some time to yourself, stretch your legs, get a snack, have a drink and enjoy a little break. I will see you in about five minutes. And we are back. Now I've given my dragonfly a good amount of time to dry. If yours is still wet, be patient. Let it dry before you do this next step. Now all we need to finish these dragonflies off is a normal pen. I am using just a Bic Biro. You can get these in packs, really, really cheap. If you don't have a Bic pen, you can absolutely use a fine liner, even a pencil color for this step. Again, I always put the lid on the back whenever I am working so I don't lose the lid. Now what I am going to do to begin with is start by outlining everything that I have done. Just a very basic outline. So starting on my dragonfly's wings here, going back and forth with the pen, all the way around the outside edge. So I'm going back and forth with a little scratchy line, creating a nice illustrated finish. Just like that. And I'm gonna repeat that on every single wing and all down the body. There we are, so that was the main body of my dragonfly. Now this is a very loose light sketch over the top. You can see my pen whipping about back and forth, leaving all these beautiful scratchy lines. That's totally fine. That is the look that I am going for. Now what I want to do with the same slightly thicker dark line, just using my same Bic pen here, I'm gonna add some patterns on my wings. I'm gonna do the very best I can to get them the same on the opposite wings. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect though, it really doesn't. So what I'm going to do is start on my upper wing here, upper right. I'm gonna do a little line that comes away and kind of melts back into the wing again. And then whenever I do something on one, while it's fresh in my mind, I'm gonna jump across to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm sketching over here, but I'm looking over here doing the best I can to get it roughly the same. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then just a couple little lines breaking this one up. Do you see how I'm going back and forth with my pen? Back and forth, drilling that line into the paper to get it dark. 
There we are. Now we're starting to look dragonflyish with those beautiful wings. Okay, same on the bottom wings. So I'm going to start with like a little loop, I suppose, with a slightly flatter bottom on it down here. On each wing, roughly the same. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. They already look pretty fabulous. There we are. And then this one, I'm going to just pull the edges of this shape out. Maybe you want something totally different on your dragonfly. Perhaps you could go with some whimsical swirls or some really fun pattern on yours. Totally up to you. I'm just showing you how to create that kind of glassy, transparent look with the pattern over the top. There we go. Certainly not the same, but looks absolutely beautiful nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is turn my dragonfly now. I'm not done with the wings. I will come back to them in a second. I'm going to do a bit of work on my body, bringing it forward towards us. Right now, we have a big stick down the middle. Let's bring it to life. And he also needs some legs. We'll work on that too. So what I'm going to do is start by building up some shadow on one side with my pen scratchy lines rolling around the side of my dragonfly so whipping over you see I'm not doing a straight line going over I'm doing a little arch that goes up and around to show that rounded body he's not flat he comes up and back down again so my curved line helps to show that illusion that rounded illusion there and a couple lines crisscrossing down on the left hand side just to build up a little more shadow there. Again, another very useful technique for building up the volume and creating the illusion that something is coming out towards us. There are so many tricks that us artists can use. You're probably thinking, my goodness, her pen is moving quickly. It's a big biro. I am just whipping it around, sketching. I'm a serial doodler. I doodle on everything. And this is actually my favorite tool to use because realistically, everywhere has pens like this. No matter where you go, you can get a hold of one of these pens. I'm that person that doodles on napkins at restaurants using one of these. I'm not kidding. I am always doodling. There we are. So my dragonfly's body has a little more life. I've built up the shadow on just the left. Now he needs some legs as well. So coming out from this main section here, not the head, the one below, I'm going to do some little lines that shoot off the side and just kind of reach up to the outside there. And again, doing the very best I can to get it similar on the other side. These are just his legs. They could be doing different things. So they don't have to be exactly the same. But please bear in mind you're using pen and this we cannot erase. We've done the hard work getting the dragonfly down. What we're doing now is having some fun with the details. Let's do some little antennas coming out here. And then I'm thinking of doing some little curly antennas at the top just to loosen up this sketch a little bit. So let's see. I'll do a little one over here. And I'm going to do a slightly bigger one over here. Just that little step there has given my dragonfly a much more whimsical feel. I like that. Now back to my wings. Now if you ever have the opportunity to see a dragonfly up close, they are incredible. Their entire wings are covered in this tiny little network, almost like little windows, like stained glass panes. It's a fractured pattern all over. Now, I'm going to have some fun replicating that pattern on these wings, but yours could be done. We most certainly have a dragonfly here. It is up to you how much detail you want to work in. You could even focus on just doing a little bit of textured detail on each one rather than taking it all over the wing. Every artist is different. Everybody enjoys different styles. You do what works for you. So what I'm going to do is start by following my large line here with a thinner line. All the marks that I'm making on my wings now are not as thick 
as the big veins that go through and the line around the outside. I am working lighter, I am not pressing as hard, and I am not going over and over and over the lines. So here we go. I'm going to start breaking up that line that I did. Made a little section there. And do you see how I've created this little nodule pattern going down through? I'm going to do that on each one, I think. And again, on this last one here. So I have some slightly chunkier shapes there. Now, if you're doing this and your dragonfly hasn't quite dried yet, you will certainly know about it. It will be very difficult and the water will keep clogging up the pen. So again, wait for your dragonfly to dry before you attempt to do this. Now, in each of my sections here, I'm going to start to build up a very small network of these little circles and random shapes here. This is very therapeutic because you don't really have to think about it too much. You're just connecting this little network of shapes all the way out. There we go, one section done. Now I'm gonna repeat that in the others. So again, I'm just finding a random place and you can see how my pen is just linking these tiny little circles and odd shapes together, creating a really fine network of little tiny shapes. They're all different, but they all touch. They're all connected to one another and they're very small. I find whenever you're doing patterns like this, it can be a little bit tedious. And what happens is without knowing it, your shapes start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which is fine when you're focusing on the end of your pen, you don't notice it. But when you stop and look back, you have a beautiful small detail over here and you've gradually gotten larger as you've drifted away. So every now and then, just stop, lean back, look at the shapes that you're currently working on, look back to the ones that you've done, and make sure they are roughly the same. If they're not, then just remind yourself of how small your shapes should be. So I'm going to just finish my funky pattern on this one. Like I said, you can just tune out, relax, and let your pen roll. Beautiful. And I'm going to do the same coming down the side here. You can really have some fun with this. You can actually hide things in the wings. You could draw little pictures in there. You could write your initials in there and camouflage them in with the pattern. I love hiding sneaky narrative in my work. Something that no one would ever know was there unless I actually pointed it out. There we go, one beautiful glassy dragonfly wing. Now what I have to do is repeat that on each one of my wings. So I'm going to zone out and just enjoy letting my pen roll with the movements.
And there we go. She is dazzling. Beautiful work. Now I'm going to create just a little more shadow lower down on my dragonfly. So I'm whipping my pen up, up and down, creating a little bit of dark shadow close to where the wings join on to the body. Not very much. It just makes the wings seem a little bit lower down. So these areas here are lifted up a little bit. So whipping the pen down and see how quickly I whip the pen. Just creating a little bit of shadow there, very close to the dragonfly's body. When I work with a pen like this, you barely see my pen lift off the table. I just whip it around, bringing my shapes to life, scribbling back and forth. This really is one of my most favorite mediums to work with. So cheap, so simple, and so gorgeously effective. Just have a play around with it. And they have these wherever you go. Do you see how the darker my wing gets towards the center? It slides down away from us, allowing the outsides to come up. Now we can create some layering with our wings by darkening along here. This wing will come forward and the underneath wing will go back. So again, if I just darken a little bit underneath, not much, just scribble scrabbling my pen back and forth. I can create a little bit of separation between those two wings as well. Now I'm loving my little dragonfly. I think my dragonfly is looking beautiful. You can do some more little legs or any things going down if you would like. What I'm going to do is a tiny bit more in my background here. Now I've got lots of detail on my dragonfly. I want to use a little bit of a dark green here. And I'm going to create just a few slightly darker areas that are going to push back away from my dragonfly, just in a few little areas. And I think I'm actually going to speckle a tiny bit of that lovely pink that I have on my dragonfly into the background as well. Here we go, just a small amount not much at all. I'm going to activate this with my water. There we are. And remember when you add your water, the water is not done. It will carry on moving the paint out. So again, just dabbing on my paper towel, just a small amount and just very gently activating the marker pen here, using my brush to push it out. So I'm really creating some nice interest in the background, tickling over the pink there. I'm going to do all the greens first and then go back for some of those pinks. I don't really want the green and the pink blending together. Remember we discussed earlier about how certain colors can come together and create some not so pretty colors? Well, pink and green are some of those colors that will come together and create some browns and darker shades that I'm not really looking for on this piece of work. Okay. So I just want some nice pattern work going on in the background. Very gently tickling over, giving it a second to lift the marker pen up and then I'm going to go back in and move it around. You can see it lifting up off the paper as it soaks the ink. There we go. So back here again, you can see how much easier it moves once the water's had a second to sit on top of it. It lifts it up out of the paper. Just kind of dazzle it around a little bit. Dancing paintbrush, creating some fun little textures there. Just experiment, have fun. Don't think too much about it. But do remember that you don't want to take this near your dragonfly. You've used black ink and that black ink will still move around if you get too close. So be careful. And then I'm going to clean my brush, dab it, and this time go into my pinks. Being careful not to push them too much into my greens. I want them to stay nice and bright. It almost like looks kind of like a blurry flower in the distance or perhaps a berry. Just a nice splash of the color that's on the dragonfly hinted in the background as well. It just catches your eye 
as you're rolling over all of those different shades of green, there's a little splash of pink that grabs your attention. And there we go. We have our very beautiful, elegant looking dragonfly created with just very basic Crayola marker pens turned into dazzling watercolors. Now, if you enjoyed this class, have another go at doing some sort of an insect, something that has these beautiful glassy wings like a fly or even a ladybug with its wings out ready to fly. A butterfly you could do, but the color would be a little bit stronger on the wings. Whatever you choose to do, do a light sketch first. Remember, keep your sketch light so you have lots of opportunity to move your lines around if you want to. Go in with your background colors first. Whatever you choose to do, use a little bit of water to gently blend it out and give you this beautiful watercolor, almost tie-dye effect in the background using the, let's grab one here and show you, the length of the marker, not the point, the long side of the marker. Once you've got your background down, be very careful when you're adding colors on your main feature. You don't want your main feature and your background to blend together. So be very patient and allow your color to dry first. It doesn't matter how long it takes to dry, it's very important that it dries so we don't end up with a blurry image. Once your image has totally dried, use just a simple Bic pen or you can use a fine liner or a pencil color to have some fun bringing your insect to life, your fly, your ladybug, whatever you have chosen to do. Have a go at getting these beautiful, glassy looking, transparent wings. If you wanted to, you could even throw on some highlights as well using a little bit of white acrylic paint. But for now, I think I am happy with how my little dragonfly is looking. I think she is beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We would love to see what you've managed to create. So please share to Instagram or Facebook in the comments. You can also upload your work to the student portal. The most important thing, no matter what you are doing, is that you have fun. So enjoy.